Good morning. Welcome to Medina Church of the Nazarene. We're glad you're here today. Would you stand if you are able and join us in singing together? I thank you. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. You picked me up, you turned me around, and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name forever. I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. I cannot deny. I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe. My doubts are burning. Burning like ashes, ashes in the wind. Here we go. So, so long to my old friends. Burning, burning, and bitterness. You can't just keep them moving. No, you ain't welcome here. From now, from now till I walk streets of gold, I'll sing about you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. You turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart. You changed my name, forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior. You picked, you picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master. Thank the Savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same, I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. All right, amen, we have a lot to be thankful for today, great is His faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me, summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto Peace that endures. 
to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Just our voices. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again, cause I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, and I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Oh, come on my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the
have it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Would you sing that again with me? You're worthy of it all. again. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. I know no, it's not, not much, much, but I have nothing else fit for, for a king, except for a heart, heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated as we continue in worship today. We have the chance to participate in communion, the Lord's Supper. And so in just a moment, you'll be invited to come to one of the tables in the front and receive the, uh, uh, take the, the elements, the, the bread and the cup. Take those back to your seats and after the song is, is over, we'll participate in communion together. Last week in the sermon, we talk, I talked a little bit about communion and, and uh, what's, what's involved in all that and the, uh, the, the wonderful truth that when we gather at the table, we're gathering not only with our fellow believers here in this room, we're gathering not only with those who might be logged in online and you guys feel free online to uh, get your own uh, element. We can't get digitally give you a, a cup and some bread, but uh, uh, we would love for you to participate with us. We're gathering not only with those across the country and around the world who are gathering literally at these moments and participating in communion. But literally we are, we are stepping in with and communing with all those saints who have gone before us. As they have proclaimed the Lord's death until he comes again. And we're, we're gathering with all those who will continue to gather until he comes again. We remember what Jesus has done for us. His, the bread signifying his body broken. The, the, the cup signifying his blood poured out. His, his death on the cross for our sin. 
and his resurrection, overcoming the grave, setting us free to live in relationship with him. And so we, we have the, the, the possibility of walking through that physically today as we receive the elements of the bread and the cup. We're proclaiming, we're remembering, we're, we're, uh, uh, we're, we're communing, all those things. We have the, the joy and the privilege. And so I, I hope that as we have sung and as we, we always do this in, a, in a, a, a setting, a context of worship, knowing that, uh, that it's not just a religious act that we walk through. We're, uh, we're worshiping. We're, it's coming from our hearts. We're, our, our hearts are in tune with God. And if, if uh, by chance you've come in here and there needs to be a little bit of conversation uh, between you and, and God and maybe there's some confession that needs to take place, what a, what a great opportunity to do that, even as we receive His grace during this time. I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing and you're invited to uh, step out uh, as we sing that song to, to grab the elements and then go back to your seats and we'll receive it together. Father God, what a joy to know that we are meeting with you today, that your spirit is moving and working among us. Lord, we celebrate you. We celebrate uh, what you have done and what you are doing and, and what you are going to do. We proclaim that, that you, are, you are king, you are God, and we, you, are, you are not just a God, you are our God. And we commit ourselves to following you fresh and new today. We thank you for the possibility of life with you. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. Crown for a cross, you willingly died, your innocent life paid the cost. Counting your status as nothing, the king of all kings came to serve. Washing my feet, covering me with your love. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need, take everything. You are my life and my treasure. The one that I can't live without Here at your feet My desires and dreams I lay down Here at your feet My desires and dreams I lay down If more of you Means less of me Take everything Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything.
Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. And after supper, he took the cup and said, This this cup represents the blood of a new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let's pray together. Lord God, we worship you today. You are are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the God of the universe. And we, we commit ourselves to you fresh and new today. We pray that you would do your work in this world. We pray that, that uh, we can sense where you desire us to, uh, to serve and, and what you want us to do and what you want us to say and where you want us to go and, and how you want us to live. And Lord, we, we're in for all of it. We, we commit ourselves to you. We pray that you would do your work in this earth. Lord, we pray that you would provide our needs, that, that, um, that you would provide what, uh, what, what we, not only what we desire, but what we need. We, we know that you know that even more than we do. We, we come with our lists and, and we, uh, we, we know what we think we want. Lord, we even, we even submit those things to you. We pray that your, your will would be done in our, in our lives. We pray that you would meet the needs of our hearts, that you would grant our desires. But, but even more, we ask for your will to be done. And so what, whatever it is that's on our, on our minds and on our hearts, the things that are weighing us down, the things that are uh, uh, causing anxiety or stress, Lord, we just pray that you would, you would help us to give those things up, give them to you, to trust you, to work your will in those situations. We pray that you would bring your, your comfort to those who need to be comforted and your encouragement to those who, who may, be, may be feeling as though uh, you know, it's, it's, things are hard right now. Lord, we pray that you would uh, restore relationships that are strained or broken, that, that you would help us to be the, the answer instead of the problem in those situations. Lord, we pray that you would forgive us, that uh, there, there are, there are uh, times that, uh, that uh, maybe even in this past week where, where we've not had the right attitude or not said the right thing or not done the right thing or, or uh, maybe there's that one thing we just keep struggling with. Lord, we just pray that you would bring your forgiveness and grace even as we confess and repent. And we thank you that you've already promised that when we come to you with repentant hearts that you are faithful and just to forgive and to restore. Lord, thank you for this time that we have with, with each other and with you. Thank you for the, uh, the ways that your spirit moves and works. We pray that, uh, that as we open your word in just a little bit, as we think about the, the principles of, of uh, things and how you've set things up, Lord, in life, Lord, I just pray that you would speak to us, that you'll challenge us, that you'll motivate us, that, that we can truly sense uh, not just a preacher speaking, but that we can sense your spirit speaking to us in, in ways that only you can. And Lord, I pray that as we go from here in a little while, that we will go empowered by your spirit. 
that we can truly be the, the, the heart and the hands and the feet and the voice of, of your spirit in this world. That we can encounter other people and love them the way you love them and, and introduce them to life with you. Lord, we thank you for all that you are and all that you are doing and all that you are going to do as we commit ourselves to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it is time for our kiddos to head out to Hope Squadron. And again, uh, they are, have already been getting started on Christmas preparation. And um, parents, you're going to find out more about that today and all the details of all that. Um, you can mark your calendars the Sunday before Christmas Eve. So 17th, I believe it is. December 17th will be our children's uh, program, and uh, we're already looking forward to that. Parents, you've probably heard them singing a little bit already, and uh, um, so they'll be practicing on Sundays between now and then, but you'll get all those details uh, coming up. Uh, those, the, several of you, I think, are planning on coming and sticking around after church today for the New to the Naz lunch. If you are new or new-ish or maybe missed one of these in the past, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, stick around and, uh, and attend. And um, uh, we'll just uh, enjoy a light lunch together. We will uh, talk a little bit about the church and uh, um, uh, answer any questions you might have, all those kinds of things. So, uh, uh, we're looking forward to being together with you uh, right after church today. And we'll just, the tables will set up right here in the back of the sanctuary, and that's where we'll gather about, uh, yeah, about, uh, it, it'll depend on how long the preacher goes today, but uh, it'll, uh, it'll be uh, uh, right after, a few minutes after, after the final prayer, then we'll get things set up and, and get going with that. Uh, just want to remind you, too, that uh, we are serving Thanksgiving dinner at the Cleveland Victory Church of the Nazarene the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and we're already uh, getting sign-ups there. Many of you have already signed up. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet there also for volunteers to go and to help serve. And so if you're planning on doing that, please uh, uh, check that out. Uh, it's right out uh, just to the left as you're heading out the doors. Um, so make sure that um, that you uh, make those plans. And, and yeah, they've, they've had more and more folks uh, at their weekly meals. And so we are planning on serving 120. And um, so I think I told you last week, we have pared down what we're offering so that we can provide more of each of those things that, that we're doing. And we're, we're excited about uh, helping out with, with that as well. Um, and then want to make sure that you're aware that the District Prayer Watch is just a few weeks away. This is the third annual uh, week after Thanksgiving when our, our whole district, the Church of the Nazarene, uh, 63 plus churches, um, uh, encourage you to be praying for the needs of, uh, of the church. Uh, on our district, uh, folks have been uh, uh, there, there. If you look at the statistics and things, there are uh, um, an specific answers to prayer that have come out of these times of, of prayer over the last couple of years. People coming to Christ, people uh, being baptized, uh, needs being met in our churches, and and so I strongly encourage you to uh, take a time slot. And maybe you're going, oh, I go on there, uh, I got my phone, there's a little QR code, and I did it, and oh my goodness, that's a whole hour. I'm signing up for an hour, and I don't know that I can pray for an hour. Well, um, if you haven't ever prayed for an hour, what a great time to start. And uh, if you have, but you're wondering how in the world... Are we gonna, am I going to pray for an hour? Well, there will be a prayer guide for you. My experience is in this that uh, the time runs out before the guide runs out. And I'd uh, love for you to, uh, to use that along with your time and set aside uh, some time. And, and maybe it's, maybe it's going to stretch you a bit. Um, I don't think it's going to be bad for your spiritual life if you uh, take that step. And so I strongly encourage you to be a part of the, uh, the NCO District Prayer Watch the last week of, of November. Man, there's some other stuff there in your program. Make sure you make, uh, take note of all those things. If you are visiting with us today or if, uh, if maybe some information has changed, a great way to connect with the church is through this Connect card. Uh, it's right there in the pocket in the seat in front of you, in the back of the seat in front of you. And I'd um, uh, love for you to fill that out uh, as well as prayer needs and things. Or if you want to just send a, send a message, uh, all that's on your bulletin as far as sending messages to me or to the church. 
church, uh, and we will be praying for those needs as well. So uh, there's there's a whole lot of ways uh, that you can uh, support the church, and we show you this slide every week, and you all uh, maybe know it already, but uh, there's a whole lot of ways that you are already uh, giving and, and so generous and supportive of, of what God is doing uh, in and through our church, and you can do that in a multitude of ways, including that little box in the back, and uh, so we, we encourage you to do that. Well, in just a moment, we will be uh, stepping into the next installment of our, of our Essentials uh, sermon series. And as we do that, as we've been doing each week of this series, we'll be reciting the Apostles' Creed. And so Mike Hall is going to come and lead us in that now as we uh, step into the next, uh, uh, next installment of this all about giving and service. So, Thank you. Test, test, test. Okay, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All this fall we've been looking at the essentials of our faith, who we are and what we believe. And no, it is not essential that you can juggle or balance weird things uh, in order to uh, follow Jesus. Uh, but it is essential, as that indicated, it is essential that you serve in some way. Uh, we've been studying who God is, what Jesus has done for us, how the Holy Spirit works in the world and in our lives. We've seen what sin is and how Jesus has provided for our salvation We've even discovered that we can live holy lives as we ask the Spirit to sanctify us and to fill us. We've spent some time emphasizing how important the Bible is and how we connect to God in prayer. And, and last week we talked all about the church, uh, what the Bible calls the body of Christ. Because Jesus is the head and we are the body. Those who follow him are his hands and feet. Uh, we are Jesus' influence in the world where we live. We don't go to church we are the church. And today I want to drill down on a couple of things that we should be doing as part of the body of Christ, as part of the church, because we can, we can talk about all this stuff and, and we can try to make sure that our theology is all correct and, 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 and make sure that we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's and, oh yes, I believe in that and I believe in that and I can quoting the Apostles' Creed and yes, and I'm sitting in my chair quoting the words. But if we're not doing anything, if we're not living it out, then it doesn't really make much difference. There's a, there's a book that we hand out to our, uh, uh, in our church membership classes. It's, it's called I Am a Church Member. Tom Rayner, Dr. Tom Rayner uh, uh, wrote this book. It's just a little, little book. I didn't bring one up here with me, but um, it, it just walks through some of, the, uh, some of the, the, the important parts of what should characterize someone who, who is part of a, a local church. And, and maybe it's some stuff that, that maybe pastors assume that people know, but uh, it's kind of those where we, he's written down some of the unwritten things 
things that maybe we kind of assume but make sure everybody understands. And it's, it's a lot about this whole idea of, of being active and involved and serving. Um, what does it mean? Uh, just a couple of lines from that book. He says, the concept of an inactive church member is an oxymoron. Biblically, no such church member really exists. God placed us in churches to serve, to care for others, to pray for leaders, to learn, to teach, to give, and in some cases, to die for the sake of the gospel. Giving of yourself and serving God are essential to your spiritual life. It's, it's literally how you were made. Ephesians 2.10 says we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. You are God's handiwork. God created you. You weren't just an afterthought. Uh, you were the result of God's creative skill and effort. Uh, that word handiwork, maybe in, in uh, your translation or maybe a, uh, something you've read uh, in another version somewhere uh, says masterpiece. You are a masterpiece or you are God's workmanship. Uh, the, the picture here is of a master craftsman, God, creating art uh, or, or an author painstakingly crafting a poem. You, are, you have been lovingly designed by God as his original masterpiece. I, I don't know, maybe somebody needed to hear that today. Maybe you're feeling a little bit less than and to realize that you have been crafted, put together uniquely by the, the, the God of the universe. That, that should be something that kind of ignites something within us, right? You are a masterpiece created by God himself. But you are not just a work of art that's going to be hung up on a wall somewhere and displayed and people go, oh, that's cool, and move on. You, you have been created by God, his original masterpiece, but created with purpose, right? You, you've been created, this says, so that we can do the good things that God has planned for us to do. The good works that God has created, uh, prepared in advance for us to do. We have been created and redeemed in order to be useful to God, <laughs> to fulfill his purposes in the world. The, the Lord's Prayer, if, uh, if, if you, maybe you've memorized that prayer, you probably have, know what that is. The, the Lord's Prayer, there's a phrase in there, it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will. It, it's a rather significant phrase because in praying those words, you're actually asking that our, uh, that our world would start to look like heaven. That God's will would be accomplished in this life. We're asking for God to intervene, to bring heaven to earth, to overcome sin and its consequences, to push back the dark and to shine the light. Uh, it's, it's a great thing to pray for, but I think that too many people pray it passively. As if God is just going to zap that into happening, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, do it. I'm going to sit back here and have a sandwich and go ahead and make that happen. But that isn't usually how God works. Most of the time, God uses people like you and me to be involved in bringing his kingdom and his will to this earth. God's plan for accomplishing his will, for overcoming the consequences of sin, for bringing heaven to earth, it, it very, uh, very literally lies in our hands. The, the good things that God has planned for you to do will bring his kingdom to this earth and uh, uh, accomplish his will. It will push back the darkness uh, so his will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. So don't pray that prayer passively as if, as if your only part is to, uh, uh, is to quote a few words and then feel good about yourself that you prayed, right? God accomplishes his work through his people. God desperately wants to bring his kingdom and his will to earth just like it is in heaven, and his plan to do that is through you. Many of the good things that God has prepared for you to do uh, are things that, that God has prepared for all of us to do. 
Right? There, there's, a, there's a whole lot of things that, that uh, God expects of us as we bring his kingdom to earth that, that all of us should be, should be involved. For instance, uh, Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the spirit. Right? So, so if the spirit is living in us, then he's developing God's character in his love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Uh, uh, followers of Jesus, all of us, should be displaying those characteristics. Those things should be growing in us. We should be uh, the, 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 the works that God has prepared for us to do includes loving others and so as God as the spirit develops that love within us we're we're all expected to to do that we're, we're expected to be kind we're expected to be patient um all all of these things those those are expected of of all of us and they will naturally spring forth as uh, as as God is working in our hearts and we're we're connected to him Something specifically that, that I, I want to hit on today, and, the, and that is, and it expe- God expects of all of us, is generosity. God, God has blessed us, not, to, uh, not so we can hoard our blessings, but in order to be a blessing to others. So uh, generous giving is essential to our spiritual lives. 2 Corinthians, uh, there's, there's a, a ton of verses, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 are, are uh, a few of my favorites uh, when we think about this whole generosity concept. He, he, Paul says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided to give, in, uh, decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful Giver And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As we give, God blesses. But we don't give just so God will bless me. Uh, I, I give because it's one way that I participate in what God is doing in the world. And, and this says that the giving is a key way that we can, I mean it says there in the last line, we can abound in doing those good works that God has prepared for us to do. Right? One way that we do that is through generosity and giving. John Wesley uh, lived in the 1700s in England and, and he didn't start out a rich man at all. In his adult life, uh, he, uh, he started out as a, as a kind of a poor preacher, maybe a lower middle class. Uh, the, the, from, from what I've read, he made about 30 pounds a year. Now, we don't know what in the world that means, right? But, but uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, indication is he was kind of lower middle class. He had enough, but, but barely. And, and as he became more and more well-known as a preacher over the years, he earned more and more. And in his later years, uh, they say that instead of 30 pounds a year, it was more like 1,400 pounds a year. So he's significantly more, quite a lot. Even as his wealth increased, though, John Wesley chose to keep living simply, and he lived on just about 30 pounds a year and never increased that. He kept his lifestyle the same. In looking ahead to his death, death, Wesley said, if I leave behind me 10 pounds, you and all mankind can bear witness against me that I have lived and died a thief and a robber, he said. When he died in 1791, the only money that he had were the miscellaneous coins in his pockets and a couple in his dresser drawers. They say that he probably earned close to 30,000 pounds over his lifetime and most of that had been given away. Wesley had his eye on the kingdom of God and his his ministry is still impacting lives today uh, hundreds of years later. When we give to God uh, through our church and other worthy causes we're providing for good works to be done in the world and in people's lives. Right? You 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 are such a a generous Church, you are making a difference in, in giving, and, and I know for a fact that many of you aren't just giving in the offerings at, at church or in the special things that we ask you to give for, but you're supporting other ministries and other places and doing other things in our community and across the country and around the world, and, and it's, it's abounding, those good works are abounding. Your generosity is an essential way that we're participating in what God is doing in this world as his kingdom comes and his will is is done. Giving is essential. They, they say um, that uh, uh, the, 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 your wallet is the last thing to get sanctified. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's true or not, but, uh, but I do know that, um, that generosity 
is uh, and, and giving and participating in what God is doing through through how he has blessed and we give and we can't outgive him and and over and over and over again and so so if I, you know if that's something that that uh, you're wondering about or struggling with or I don't know that I have the money to do try it out test him and see what what happens and and start seeing what God can do as you uh, as you are generous with what he gives that's just one of, of many things that God expects of all of his followers, right? Good works that he's prepared for us to do. And there's, there's, a, whole, there's a whole bunch. But, but there are also certain things that, that God calls us each to do specifically, right? We've, we've been created uniquely and you've been created differently than me. And I've been created differently than, than someone else. And so and we all have different gifts and passions and opportunities and experiences. So serving God according to how he has made us is, uh, is, is a key component. It's essential to a healthy spiritual life. Uh, so, so how do we figure out specifically what he, what he wants us to do? I, I think there are probably three mistakes that, uh, that we make related to serving others. We either don't do anything... We do the wrong things or we do too many things. Hopefully, uh, after today, focusing on Ephesians 2.10, uh, you're, you're becoming convinced that, that serving God is, is, and serving others, uh, it's essential to your spiritual life. So hopefully, number one, we can check that off. That's not going to be a mistake we make anymore. Uh, we're we're going to do something, right? So, so we've taken care of number one. Unfortunately, many churches have a reputation of, of taking advantage of the people who are willing to serve. And uh, many times we allow and maybe even encourage people to violate number three. Oh, you want to serve? You're going to do that? Well, we've got this, 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 and this also uh, possible for you to do. Why don't you come on board? And uh, um, hopefully we haven't done that too many times uh, here in, in our church. I've always said that I never want our church to be the cause of your nervous breakdown. Um, it may have been at some point, uh, but uh, don't overextend in serving. We can, uh, you know, God has, has, uh, has plans for each of us to serve. And if each of us are doing what we need to do, none of us are doing too much. We're doing just what he has planned for. So, so and number one is taken care of. You're going to do something. Uh, number three is taken care of. We're not going to ask you to do too much. You just need to do what God is calling you to do. Uh, but what about number two? How do, how do I figure out how to serve in the right ways uh, and discover specifically how God uh, wants to, to work through me, those good works that he's prepared for, for me to do, right? Uh, how, do, how do I know specifically what he, what he wants? In, um, in junior high and high school, I always uh, tried out for the school plays and musicals. And, um, you know, you do the little tryout thing and then you wait and the teachers do whatever they do and figure all things out and they talk and the directors and whatever. And then at some time, the, the, the day comes when they post the cast list up on the bulletin board, right? And so with, uh, with excitement and a little uh, fear and trepidation, you go up to the bulletin board um, and look and see what part. And so I'd go up there and see what part I'd either gotten or not gotten. For me, I usually got several roles, and that wasn't because I was good. Um, man number six is not necessarily something I was trying out for. I, I, uh, I, I literally was, one time, uh, it said on the thing, crowd member. That was, that was one of my roles. Uh, in, the, in the small Christian school I went to many times, uh, many of us who were utility players, I guess we could say, uh, uh, did several roles. I remember, I think it was my freshman year, I was, uh, I was uh, six different parts uh, with a total of less than ten lines and several different costume changes uh, as we did a little Abner. And I was, I think that was when I was crowd member and uh, man number six and a couple of other Things. I reached the pinnacle of my high school thespian career when I landed the role of Rolf in The Sound of Music. I was 17, going on 18, and I literally got to kiss my girlfriend on stage because she was Liesel, and that was a whole other, and I won't tell you anymore because my wife's sitting here. So, um, But you know, you have to rehearse. Some, oh, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. 
I say all that to say, you know, we, we, you, you get, the, get the part, you realize what part you, you have, then they, they call you together, there's the books, everybody gets their own book for their own parts, and you've got the whole thing, and then, then you start memorizing your lines, and, and in those books it literally says, uh, this person says this, and then they walk to here, and they go here, and they do that, and, and it gives you the, all this specific stuff, and so then you start working it all out, and over the next couple of months you, you get all that together, and it's described very specifically what you need to do. So it would be great, wouldn't it? If God has scripted our lives in such a way that all we need to do is, is find the list of what role we're supposed to play and get the book and act it out. It would be great if there was a list. There's not a list. God doesn't post the roles that we're to play on heaven's bulletin board. Part of how we discover what he wants us to do and, and how he wants us to live is simply by staying connected to him through, through prayer and spiritual disciplines and through scripture and, and uh, spending time in the church, right? We, and so we, as we stay connected to him and as we grow closer and closer to him, uh, you'll sense his guidance and direction in specific places. Hey, go here, do this, uh, don't do that. And, and we sense his guidance as we're getting closer and closer to him. We talked about some of that in past weeks. And we can also get a clue for where we're supposed to serve based on, uh, based on how he has designed us. Yeah, I told you, he, you are a, an original masterpiece. God has created you specifically and he has these good works that, that he's uh, planned for you to do. So if we look at how he's put us together, we might get a clue for how, how, what we're supposed to do. It, when, when I was serving as a youth pastor in Wichita, Kansas, uh, another lifetime ago... Uh, we, uh, the youth group invited the senior adults to dinner. The senior adult group at that church uh, was the joy group. Just older youth. And as cheesy as that sounds, they really were kind of a fun group. And uh, we, we invited them to dinner. And uh, the, the specific thing that we wanted to do there, so we had the whole youth group and invited the, the joy group. And, and the, we wanted the joy group to bring uh, an antique with them. Something that, uh, that maybe they even used as a, as a child growing up or as a teenager. And, and uh, uh, the, the weirder the better. We wanted them to bring that. And, um, and then the teens uh, were ready. We had a list of the, the, uh, the slang terms that the teens were using that of the day. And uh, the senior adults didn't know what in the world those things meant. And so, so we were going to each guess, uh, guess what, what they, they were. And so the, the, the senior adults tried to guess what the words meant, the slang terms. Uh, but then they, uh, they brought out their antiques and the teens could flip them around and look. And I don't know that we guessed too many of them. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, trying to look and see, well, it's got this and it does that. And maybe this is used for that. And maybe you, uh, it, it, as, as they're trying to, uh, they're, they're basically looking to see how it's designed and, and what different parts are there and, and what it's used for. And sometimes they give us a hint, well, this is for the, oh, well, then that is, it's probably was used for this. It's a great way to, to tell how, what something should be used for to look at how it's designed, right? And once we see the design, then we can see that, it, well, it should be used in, in this way. And so, uh, so that can help us discover how God wants to use us as we serve. So if you're wondering what use you'd be in the kingdom of God, I'd challenge you to start looking at your design. Now someone a lot smarter than me came up with uh, things to, uh, uh, to match up with those letters of, uh, of the word design and uh, help us to kind of see what it is that God would have us to do. Uh, the first, uh, the, the D in the word design is what do I desire? Psalm 34, 8, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So, so what are you passionate about? What are, you, what are your dreams? What do you see in the world that needs to change? And you just, man, it just gets you. We could really do something here. Uh, uh, God is not going to call you to something that you hate. I always used to think that God was going to call me to be a missionary on the backside of uh, Africa because I would hate that. And so God's going to get me by calling me to Africa, right? Well, that's not, God doesn't call you to something that you hate. He calls you to something that, that, he, that he's drawing you to. And so what are your desires? And, and sure, those desires might, might grow and change as you commit your life to him and you're growing closer to him and his desires become your desires. How has God designed you? What are your desires? The, the E in desire uh, is, it stands for experience. What have I experienced in life? Romans 8.28 says that we know in all things God works... For the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his 
purpose, your, your spiritual experience. Uh, maybe uh, maybe your, some great experiences you've had in your life. Maybe some very painful experiences in your life. Some life lessons that you've learned along the way. Those are great ways that God may use you then to speak into and to help others who are going through some of those same Things Part of the good that God brings through you and through the circumstances of your life is the opportunities later to, uh, to use those things in the lives of others. What, what, are, what are the experiences that you've had? The S stands for spiritual gifts. What are my spiritual gifts? 1 Corinthians 7, 7, each one has his own gift from God. One has this gift, the other, another has that gift. There, there are lists, uh, several different passages in scripture. I'm not sure any of them are exclusive or, or uh, you know, there, there are others that, that maybe aren't even listed in scripture, but the Holy Spirit gifts us specifically and uh, with, with divine power and design in order for us to serve in certain ways. And so we are all gifted for ministry and we'll all be uh, a little different in that. But, but what are my spiritual gifts? Uh, the I stands for individuality. Maybe we'd say personality here. I don't know, but it doesn't, you, you can't spell the word design with a P in the middle of it. So uh, we're going to call it, what is my individuality? Psalm 139, 13, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. We are uniquely made. Uh, what are you like? What, what's your personality? Introverted, extroverted, a little bit of both. What, uh, God matches us up with, with people and needs that we click with. And, and uh, he brings us together. What is my individuality? The G stands for what am I good at? Second, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 6. There are different abilities to perform service. What, what are you good at? What, what do people compliment you on? Man, you're so good at that. Um, it, it's just something, maybe you've been good at it all. You're just, God has, has designed you uh, to be good and have certain abilities. And, and then the end um, is the, what is the need? Romans 12, 13, share with God's people who are in need. Uh, what are the opportunities that are around you? So if I'm designed this way, but, uh, and so I want to do this, but that's not really a need, maybe I need to rethink all that and see what the needs are and how, how my gifts and, and uh, abilities and experience match up with those things. And it could very well be that sometimes, whether we're gifted in it or not, there might be a need that we just need to step into sometimes, right? We just need to, we just need to set up the tables or fold the chairs or uh, serve at the soup kitchen just because the need is there. Maybe instead of saying, well, that's not my gift I guess I'll just sit sit this one out sometimes we need to meet those needs how has God designed you, you know, hopefully that uh, some of that is is beneficial as you seek out the right place to serve but maybe maybe all of this could seem just a little overwhelming I, I mean at the end of the day it does not seem very feasible that the God of the universe would need me ...to do anything, to accomplish anything for him, right? Uh, how in the world can I help God with his work? I, I'm not qualified. I, I heard a phrase years ago, I don't know who actually said it first... Uh, ...several different people uh, uh, have, have said it, it's just become one of these things... ...and you've probably, maybe you've heard it. God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called... When he calls you to something, he gives you the power and the ability to be able to do it. And so, so as, as Paul proclaims in, in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ through all generations. Amen. Now, may, maybe you, uh, on your own, you don't measure up to the task that God has for you. But it's his power that works within us. He will qualify you to do his work. Maybe you've, uh, you've been thinking, oh, I think God is calling me to this. There's no way I could do that. Oh, there's no way. I, I can't. Order. If he's calling you, if he's really calling you, he will empower you to be able to do it. He designed you, remember? You are his handiwork, his masterpiece, and, and he knows what he's doing. There's a, there's a little story uh, that I ran across in a book um, a while back by Bob Benson. Maybe you're familiar with Bob, maybe not. Uh, Bob Benson is one of those authors, kind of a devotional author and, uh, that, that, uh, and a preacher uh, from, uh, well, he's, he's since passed on, but uh, just had a way with, you know, turning a word, so to speak, and just, just kind of resonates uh, with me. And, uh, and I just want to read uh, one of his little uh, devotional uh, thoughts, kind of a, a folksy, meaningful uh, way of, about him, and, and I think maybe this will resonate with us today. 
Bob Benson writes, Do you remember when you had old-fashioned Sunday school picnics? They said, We'll all meet at Sycamore, Sycamore Lodge in Shelby Park at 4.30 on Saturday. You bring your supper and we'll furnish the iced tea. But if you're like me, you came home at the last minute. When you got ready to pack your picnic, all you could find in the refrigerators was one dried up piece of bologna and just enough mustard at the bottom of the jar that you got it all over your knuckles trying to get at it. And just two slices of stale bread to go with it. So you made your bologna sandwich and wrapped it in an old brown bag and you went to the picnic. When it came time to eat, you sat at the end of a table and spread out your sandwich. But the folks who sat next to you brought a feast. The lady was a good cook and she had worked hard all day to get ready for that picnic. And she had fried chicken and baked beans and potato salad and homemade rolls and sliced tomatoes and pickles and olives and celery. And two big homemade chocolate pies to top it off. That's what they spread out there next to you while you sat there with your bologna sandwich. But then the unimaginable happened. They said to you... Why don't we just put it all together? No, I couldn't do that. I couldn't even think of it, you murmur in embarrassment with one eye on the chicken. Oh, come on, there's, there's plenty of chicken and plenty of pie and plenty of everything. And, and we just love bologna sandwiches. Let's just put it all together. And so you did. And you sat eating like a king when you came like a pauper. He says, one day it dawned on me that God had been saying just that sort of thing to me. Why don't you take what you have and what you are, and I will take what I have and what I am, and we'll share it together. I began to see that when I put what I had and was and am and hope to be with what he is, I had stumbled on the bargain of a lifetime. I get to thinking sometimes, thinking of me sharing with God. When I think of how little I bring and how much he brings and invites me to share, I know that I should be shouting to the housetops. But I'm so filled with awe and wonder that I can hardly speak. I know that I don't have enough love or faith or grace or mercy or wisdom. But he does. He has all those things in abundance. And he says, let's just put it all together. Consecration, denial, sacrifice, commitment, and crosses were all kind of hard words to me until I saw them in the light of sharing. It isn't just a, a case of me kicking in what I have because God is the biggest kid in the neighborhood and he wants it all for himself. He, he's saying, everything that I possess is available to you. Everything that I am and can be to a person, I will be to you. And when I think about... Uh, a about it like that, it really amuses me to see somebody running along through life, hanging on to their dumb bag with that stale bologna sandwich in it, saying, God's not going to get my sandwich. No siree, this is mine. He ends it with this line. He says, you see, it's not that God needs your sandwich. The fact is, you need his chicken. You and I, on our own... <laughs> I mean, we don't really appear to bring much to the table, right? All of our abilities and resources, we talked about all these things and God has made us, but really when we compare that with all that God is, all of our abilities and resources probably just seem like a crusty bologna sandwich. But God's resources are abundant and he invites us to go all in with him. It's his power at work within us. And not only do we benefit from his blessings, but then he uses us to bless others as he pours his resources through us. He has created us with good works for us to do, and then he enables us to do those things. You are God's handiwork. He made you just the way you are, and he has prepared good works for you to do. So the bottom line question has to be, are you doing them? Are you seeking out how God wants to use you to bring his kingdom to this world? Giving and serving are essential to a life following Jesus. In just a second, our, our worship team is going to come up. But as they come, uh, we're going to watch this little video. So worship team, you can come up while this is playing. So... Each day from the moment we wake up, 
we have choices to make. Some choices are simple, basic, trivial, while others require more thought and consideration. Now, some choices can change the course of your day, while others are nearly meaningless. But as we walk through the next 24 hours, there is one choice we'll make over and over again. Who will we serve? It's a choice of priorities, dedication, faithfulness. It's about choosing to live out the call God has placed on all of our lives, to take each step and live each moment for His glory. Today, there are never-ending opportunities for us to make an eternal difference in the world around us. We simply need to decide to do so. The choice is ours. stand and join us if you're able. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great Oh, 
God, we pray that you would use us, maybe even today, maybe even this, this week, Lord, to be able to see those needs that are around us and to serve you. I pray, Lord, that we would be uh, discerning to know what it is you desire us to do. I pray that you would help us to, to uh, not only to see specific needs every once in a while, but that you would see where you want us to serve uh, regularly in places in the church and in the community and, and uh, online. Lord, I just pray that you would open up those opportunities, that you would nudge us to, uh, to follow you. We thank you for the ways that, that you have made us. And, and we thank you for the, the, the opportunities that we have around us. And we thank you, Lord, for your power that is at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we could possibly think is possible. Lord, we, we commit ourselves to you and we're excited about how you're going to lead us this week. In Jesus' name, amen.